guys. Hello. Thank you guys for coming so much. So tonight we're going to talk about a guide for your potty training journey. Um, I'm Brittany Bogansky. I'm a BCBA here at our Rockledge location. And I'm so glad that you guys could join me tonight. All right, so an overview of kind of some of the stuff that we'll be talking about tonight. We'll start with where do you start in your potty training journey? Um, communicating the need to go, prompting a way to communicate the need to go, um, following a schedule, highly preferred items, and then increasing the schedule. We all know accidents will happen, and examples of schedule changes, and we can leave it open for discussion. All right, so potty training is something that every parent has to go through. I know it's not fun. Um, it is not always the easiest thing for us to do, and it's even harder when your child is on the spectrum. So it's super important um, when your child is on the spectrum that we take it as a journey. It's not going to be a quick process. It's going to be a journey, and it's going to have ebbs and flows, but it will be okay. You will make it through. Alrighty, so where to start? When beginning your potty training journey, in our experience, it is important that your child has the means to communicate that they need to go to the bathroom. So if you don't know when they need to go, it's going to be hard to potty train them. Um, so we need to figure out how to help them with that means to go. Alrighty. So, let's see here, a little friend telling us the potty dance. So, communicating the need to go, your child can communicate the need to go many different ways. All of our children communicate differently. Okay, so some use words. Some use word approximations and sounds. Um, others can use pictures. You can use augmentative and alternative communication devices. Um, sign language and using gestures. Like that one, <laughs> which I believe we've all done in our lifetime. Um, and I'm sure we've seen other kiddos do as well. So for using words, we can teach them or they can tell us like, hey, I have to go to the bathroom or potty. Approximations, they can use words like huh, and oddy or pointing for the gestures. Um, pictures, there are little picture cards that they can give you or point to if you have one next to the door. Um, there are devices on tablets or communication pads that they can touch the picture of a bathroom and it says bathroom and then that means they can go to the bathroom. And then there's also sign language. So I have to go potty um, and gestures. Of course. All right, so our first pop quiz. Getting there nice and early. What is the first thing you need before you start your potty training journey? We got A, undies, B, a way to communicate the need to go, and C, a hazmat suit. B. <laughs> Very good. Yes, awesome, let's see. And you are correct, Mundo. We need a way to communicate. All right, so. What if your child doesn't have a way to communicate? So they don't have a set way yet. So a way to teach children to communicate their wants and needs is by prompting them or showing them how to do it and helping them to do it. So if your child has words, you can prompt them by bringing them towards the bathroom and then have them say potty before they go in. So you would then reach down to them as you're at the bathroom, you would say, say potty. And then once they say potty, you go into the potty, you pull the pants down, we go potty. So, easy peasy. Um, if they don't have words yet, you can prompt them to hand you a picture. So you would take their hand over your hand, have them give you the picture, and then show them, yes, you asked for a potty, let's go! And then we can also prompt them to touch a picture. So I keep this outside my door. When we walk up to the potty, you touch it, if you don't know how to touch it, I'm going to then guide you to touch the picture. And then, yay, you asked to go potty, let's go potty. And then we can go in and do our business. Um, you can also prompt them 
to touch a picture on a device so that they have an, automated an alternative communication device. You can go to the picture of the potty, have them touch it. It'll say potty for them or bathroom or whatever it may be. And then they can go in and do their business. Um, you can also prompt them to sign. So if they have good fine motor skills, you would then move their hand to do this little thing. And then they just wait and you just kind of twist it for them. And then they can go into the bathroom. Um, you can also prompt them to say an approximation. So if you have lots and lots of sounds, you can then say, say pup for potty or any other approximation that you would want to accept for that. Right. Question number two, how can you teach your child to communicate when you need to go? A, by prompting them to ask for the potty, B, by picking them up and running them to the bathroom as they are going. Or C, by asking them every few minutes if they have to go potty. Okay. Very good, you got it. A is our number one thing, so we want to give them that opportunity to communicate. And eventually, those prompts will no longer be needed. And they will eventually know how to do whatever means that you taught them. They will then be able to do on their own. All right. So, following a schedule, research has shown that potty training individuals on the spectrum is more successful when training is intensive and consistent. So, super important. So, starting on a dense schedule of five minutes on the potty and five minutes off the potty is typically most successful. Now, how do you do this? Well, you pack up all the fun stuff that you can find. You go, you sit in or around the potty all day long. Number one most important thing, your child needs to be in underwear. No pull-ups, no diapers. Again, this is an intensive potty training. So everything else that you've tried hasn't worked. So now it's time for some intensive potty training. So we're gonna start straight out the gate with underwear, um, but it doesn't have to be hard. It can be super duper fun. So we're going to load them up on fun snacks, fun drinks, their favorite drinks, because we want to give them lots and lots of stuff with high water intake so they can then increase the urge to go. Because the more water intake you have, the higher your urge to go will be and the more likely you'll be successful at taking that first trip to the potty and going. So we also want to make sure we want them to be in the underwear too because we want them to feel the sensation when they have an accident. It is important that they feel what that feels like. It's not very fun. So we want them to then feel it and get the consequences of going on themselves so they likely not want to do that again and they'll want to meet the contingency to go on the pot. All right, so now that we've started them going on the potty, now we need a way to make them excited about going on the potty and something that they can earn for just going high. So it is also important that your child is motivated to go. Um, so when potty training, we want to use highly preferred toys, activities, um, games, and things to make the bathroom and sitting on the potty super duper fun. Um, we don't want them to not want to go potty. We want to make it fun. Then we want to save those extra special things like candy they hardly ever get or never get, um, special time on the tablet if they don't get that very often, or if you want to then withhold it and have them earn it for the potty, um, a special toy, a special video, a movie, anything that they don't get very often, that will help your child be successful in the potty. So we want to pick the things that they don't typically get for that special going on the potty, especially at the very beginning of their journey. All right, so increasing your schedule. So as I said, we started on five minutes on, five minutes off. As we go through, the schedule and your child becomes successful, we want to increase that sit time. So as your child is more successful at the dense schedule, five minutes on, five minutes off, 
you can then increase the duration of your time off the potty. So, after about two hours, your child's had no accidents, we've had lots of potty parties, you can increase the schedule to five minutes on the potty and 10 minutes off the potty. And then you would continue to increase the schedule about every two hours depending on your child's success. Um, at any point, if your child has two accidents in a row, you will then move back to the previous sitting schedule. So let's say we have now moved to the 10 minutes on, 10, five minutes, five minutes on, 10 minutes off, and they finally have a void in the potty, we throw them this big party, we give them that extra special candy that they never get, and then about five minutes later, because they are drinking and eating a lot of really fun stuff, they have an accident. That's okay. We're going to clean it up, um, and then we are going to continue on our 10 minutes off and five minutes on. Let's say they void on the next 10 minutes, and they go in the potty, we throw a big party, it's great! Then we're going to stay at the 10 minute schedule. And then, now they would have to have two different accidents. So the first one is now done because they voided. So they're still successful at the 10 minute schedule. We'll stay, okay? Alright! Of different ways to do the schedule. So again, you go, we start at the five minutes, then we move to the 10 minutes, um, typically two hours after the 10 minutes. If there are no accidents or only that one accident, we will, I might add an extra hour in there if there is that one accident because I like to be sure. Um, and then I would move to the 15 minutes off the potty and five minutes on the potty. During all of the early stages, I stay close to the bathroom. I typically keep them just in their underwear um, and a t-shirt. Um, I don't typically have them in shorts or anything like that because, again, accidents will happen. But if they are starting to move around, then we'll put full clothes on and we will deal with those accidents as they come. Once we hit the 15 minutes off schedule and the five minutes on schedule, then we can then we can move on, if we are successful, to 30 minutes. And then we go up by 15 minutes until we get to an hour. Okay? Now, let's say we have those two accidents in a row. What do we do? So at any point, if you have two accidents in a row, you're going to go back to your previous step. Yep, your previous step. So let's say you have two accidents in a row while you're on your 30 minutes. You're going to go all the way back to your 15 Stay at your 15 minute schedule until you have those two hours of success. Okay? And then once you hit an hour, we go up by every 30 minutes every day. So I would like to, once you hit an hour, you should stay there for the full day, at least. Just to be safe, um, to make sure they're still meeting those contingencies and they get the process. They got it down pat, and then. You can go up by 30 minutes each day as long as they don't have those two accidents. Um, they even knew me at Jersey Mike's because every day I went there um, before I went to his session and I had to get in pickles. Uh, so those are things. Find what they're motivated for no matter what it is, what you do. You want to make sure that they are motivated for whatever it is that they like. A little toy, anything. And again, those are for those successful moments. So we wait for the success, and then we provide the item. Uh, we can also show them, too, so like they see it. Like, hey, you go pee me on that body, you get this. You know, yeah, anything know. like that. Um, and for our final words, the words of great Mr. Manny over there, um, just remember, potty training is a journey. Every child's journey is going to be. And that's okay.